the brushless DC motor is the most common actuator in electromechanical systems. It typically is used in servo control and closed loop control of motion stages. So for example, in a milling machine, um, they'll use uh, brushless DC motor to run the stages. Also in uh, robot arms, essentially the construction of the DC brushless DC motor is like so. You have a stator with uh, coils and you have a rotor that is attached to a very powerful electromagnet. Uh, electronic circuitry keeps changing the polarity of the uh, well, coils here uh, depending on the location of the uh, rotor magnet and this makes it rotate. So this is a schematic of uh, electrical schematic of the brushless DC motor. Uh, this is your input voltage. You could either do a voltage control or current control. In this case, you're looking at voltage control. RA is the resistance of the coils. LA is the inductance of the coils of the stator, or you could say armature. And here, this is a load. So since this is a loop, you could assume that IA is the current and the motor itself behaves like a potential source that opposes uh, the current so vb is the so-called back emf on the mechanical side you have motor moment of inertia the motor could be the motor could have a bearing with some damping and typically the motor is connected to the load through a flexible uh, shaft which may have uh, stiffness K1 so J1 is the load ultimately we are interested in what theta 1 is so the whole goal of uh, 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 this whole modeling exercise is to find a relationship between theta 1 which is the output and VA which is the input so there are coupling equations that relate the mechanical side to the electrical side the first equation is the back emf equation the back emf vb is given by ke times theta m dot ke is called the back emf constant theta m dot is the rotational speed of the motor similarly the torque generated by the motor tau m is given by kt times ia where ia is the armature current and So let's look at the mechanical load equation. So we have two masses. So we start drawing the free body diagrams uh, for uh, the load. So we assume that theta one is greater than theta m, which means so looking from this side, and let's say both of them are rotating in the counterclockwise direction when you look from this side. So this spring gets twisted counterclockwise because theta one twists turns more than theta m that's our assumption so the spring will try to um, um, untwist in the clockwise direction so magnitude of the torque generated by the spring is given by k1 times theta 1 minus the theta m so theta 1 is in the positive direction theta 1 dot is positive and theta 1 double dot is positive now the spring torque on J1 is in the clockwise direction therefore it's negative and therefore you can write the, uh, the equation of motion J1 theta 1 double dot is summation of all torques the only torque is tau k which is negative put the negative sign in here and that gives you the uh, equation of motion for J1 for Jm um, we have uh, the rotational torque due to damping as well as the spring torque and there is a motor torque tau m that's the applied motor torque so it once again theta m is in the positive direction anti-clockwise uh, tau k1 opposes uh, let's see tau k1 is uh, in this case trying to push jm in the counterclockwise direction so it's positive tau m is in the counterclockwise direction trying to push j m counterclockwise so it's positive and the damping torque of obviously opposes motion therefore it's in negative direction 
once again you do the same uh, uh, balance of torques gm theta m double dot is sum of all torques which is uh, tau k1 plus tau m minus tau bm put in all the values tau k1 is k1 times theta 1 minus theta m tau m is tau m and uh, tau bm is minus bm times theta m dot so you get this final equation here motor dynamic uh, the dynamics of the rotor so mechanical dynamics as far as electrical equations go VA uh, you can write the Kirchhoff's voltage law like so uh, if you notice here this current direction hits uh, VB positive first so this would be taken as positive so and right here it will hit VA negative first therefore it will be written as negative so you can write VRA plus VLA plus VB minus VA equal to zero substitute all the all the values of uh, VRA, VLA, VB and VA you get IARA plus LAT, IADT plus VB equal to VA so that's the electrical part now we have all equations together the load mechanical equations given by J1 theta 1 double dot plus K1 theta 1 minus K1 theta M equal to 0 the motor body or motor rotor mechanical equations given by J M theta M double dot plus b m theta m dot plus k1 theta m minus k1 theta 1 equal to tau m the electrical equation is given by i a times r a plus l a times d i a by d t plus v b equal to v a and then you have the coupling equations for the back umf v b equal to k e times theta m dot and tau m equal to k t times i a so this is the torque equation these are the equations that relate the mechanical and electrical side of the uh, brushless DC motor drive. So if you take Laplace transform, uh, these are the equations. So the load mechanical equation will look like so. So when you do Laplace transform, you do Laplace transform with zero initial conditions. Similarly, the motor body mechanical equation will look like so electrical equation look like this and finally you have the coupling equations that will look like this so these are all the equations in the plus domain together 1 to 5 so our goal is to find uh, the output uh, input output uh, transfer function between theta 1 and VA how do we do that we eliminate all the unwanted uh, time varying quantities like theta m tau m capital tau m I A and V E from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Let's look at doing that. Um, so how did you get this equation? We took the electrical equation here and substituted for V B with the equation number 4 to get this. So this is nothing but equation number 4 substituted in here. The next step is to find an expression for I A from this equation. So you have I A here and I A here you can bring that out like so now we can take i a and uh, substitute it in here uh, number five and substitute for tau m in here that what i did yes that's what i did so what have i done here tau m i substituted as kt times i a and for i a i substituted this equation here to get this so this this equation essentially this with uh, tau m replaced with the equivalent here now what's the next step uh, we don't want theta at the theta m this theta m here this theta m here so we can use equation 1 to write theta m in terms of theta 1 right? so that's what we do or I guess in this case I have used uh, the previous equation here to write theta 1 in terms of theta uh, m or theta m in terms of theta 1 like so and uh, then you substitute for theta m from equation 1 like so and by algebra you get the final transfer function it's a bit complicated most of it is just linear algebra 
that's the end of this lecture